right, the 2022 Miami Dolphin roster is pretty much set in stone. A few little chisels here and a few little chisels here, maybe a small trade or cheap veteran pickup. But in essence, the 2022 roster that's going to head into this season to try to turn this franchise around is pretty much right in front of us. So I'm going to take a look over that and see what I can see, what I, my thoughts are, and what kind of team we're going to have heading into the season. Now, who knows? I mean, anything is possible. Guys can step up. Guys can step down. Areas you don't expect to uh, rise and shine do. All the areas you think they're t- perfectly fine. They're hit by the black plague of injuries. NFL means anything can happen at any moment in time. But, 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 from the face of it, it's pretty clear some elements of what this team is. And there's some really great elements, some really interesting and intriguing parts as both a Dolphin fan and a fan of the game of football to see what's going to become of this. But there's other areas that are very clearly areas of a little bit of concern, especially if injuries come. Before I dig into all that stuff, I want to give a shout out to you guys for stopping by here. So many places to be. The fact that you're stopping by here and spending your time with me with the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views, I am very grateful. I love to talk football, and you guys are keeping me in that business. But along with you guys is my sponsor, so I want to give them a quick shout-out, too. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white-label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. Really got to start out with Skylar Thompson. We're keeping three quarterbacks. It's been quite a while since we've kept three quarterbacks on a roster. Skylar, he did enough to make you want to say, we got to try this guy. I mean, I, I personally think the hype's a little bit too high. I think that what you see now is real, is well and good. But what does he do in the heat of battle when everything is coming down on him, what's his processing speed, what's his decision-making, it's a big difference. But he's done everything possible to make me intrigued. I'm a little conservative kind of guy, so we had to keep him. The value of the position, what he did with what was put in front of him, demanded that we keep him. Now, there had to be a little trim here or there, a play that you might want to keep, you had to let go, and it kind of changes things a little bit. But there was no, nothing else you could really do but keep this guy. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Now, with the running back situation, you know who we kept? We kept uh, Edmonds, Mostert, Gaskin, and Ahmed. What you're missing from there is Michelle, and we don't have a power back. And to me, it says two things. One, we don't got a power back. But two, I don't think that McDaniel believes that that style of play is going to mesh well with our offensive line. Our offensive line looks like it's going to have to be finesse and finagling and movement. We're not going to be able to get straight drive blocks and early reads at the line of scrimmage and ability to cut back hard and use that speed to get to the back door is what this offensive line's about. Now, that's all well and good, but when you get bad conditions or when you got to get that tough yardage for runs in short areas, you want a big back. And so that is a little concerning. But you could see how Edmonds, if you guys leave things open, you can make something happen. You can see Gaskin, all these other guys, they could do stuff. They have the ability, because they're smaller, to shift and to bounce back to different holes and gaps. But I still think we needed at least one power back. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, as far as tight ends go, I think this is a very weak group. Gusecki is a good receiver slash B blocking tight end-ish kind of guy. But we don't have a quality inline blocker who can catch the football. And that kind of says to the defense, we know what this guy's going to do, we know what this guy's going to do, and we know what this guy can do. And Smythe is kind of a little bit of everything and a little bit of nothing. And Hunter Long, he hasn't done anything to, besides being drafted third overall. And Seaton Carter is like the H-back guy, but I'm not really too high on him. So to me, this is a very thin group. I mean, Ingle, we kept Ingle too as far as the blocking. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Maybe Hunt the Long develops. I don't know. But I think this could be an area of concern. 
We will see. Now, the offensive line, to me, is an area. There's a guy I read. I'm not going to say who he was. He, he has been reading for a long time. Good guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. But I was very surprised at something he wrote. He said, we've got a solid group of offensive line with quality depth. To me, Armstead, Eichenberg, Williams, Hunt, Jackson, Dita, Jones, and Greg Little does not scream quality depth. It does scream a solid unit, but with a question mark of concern at the end of that, because Tehran's coming off a major injury. He's had a decent, a fair amount of injuries. Eichenberg has yet to prove himself. He looked a little good last week at second stringers, but prior to that, lots of concerns. Connor has definitely picked up his snapping, and I really like him at that center spot. I think he's going to thrive, and that could be good for us both short and long term. Hunt is a good player, solid player. And then Jackson, he's a big concern. And indeed is a big concern as well. He can't play guard or center. And if he does, you got big problems. You're not going to be able to run the football. Jones, I kind of like what he's doing. I still got to do my tape on him. I'm going to get that before the season kicks off. And Greg Little, I've seen so little of him except for last week. Uh, I mean, I don't know. He hasn't been successful on a pro level yet. He looked okay. He looked better than what we had over at left uh, tackle. But it's not like I'm jumping for joy. So I don't really see this as solid depth. It's concerning. We let Kinley go. Uh, and so, I don't know. To me, hopefully we get one more vet in here and move one of these guys off. I definitely think we need one more real vet. But it's really hard to find him at this stage. Maybe uh, backup center. I mean, I don't know. It's a little concerning. I just don't see us being a be able to drive block. I see us having clear weaknesses, the team's going to be able to say, okay, I know what this guy can't do, and I know what this guy can't do. I'm going to be able to attack and understand that the Dolphins' offense is going to have to cover him up for this or that. It does leave me a little concerned. Now, a little surprise, the back on the receiver part I forgot to mention, Bowden and Williams are gone. Kinley, I thought Kinley was pretty decent. I don't think I would have kept him, but those three were the – Odd, you know, departures. I kind of knew Williams was going to go. kind of thought Kinley was going to go. Bowden, I wish we kept. And I think Bowden was the spot that was lost for Skyler, but we had to keep him. So overall, I like this offense in certain ways because I think we're going to be able to really put yards on. I think we're going to be able to really tax defenses. My concern is, are we going to be able to put points on, especially when you get into that red zone? Because when you get to that red zone, some of that speed doesn't really help you as much as when you're in the other areas. And can we run the football? I mean, I think we're going to be able to do stuff as far as movement and, 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 and blocking at angles and all this, but it's going to come down to bad weather games. There's going to be some bad weather games. Where you're going to have to use your power and drive and a lot of that finesse gets taken away in the bad weather. There's going to be certain short down situations. Can we win those situations? It's going to be very, very interesting. I really, I don't know what to make of it. I have yet to see Waddle and Hill. I mean, this could be an explosion of offense like we haven't seen in a long time. Or we could find ourselves putting lots of yards on and not enough points. I don't know. I'm really excited to find out. I really am. Now, in defense, we pretty much understand what's going on. Big problem, obviously, with Byron Jones being out for the first four games, leaving, leaving Needham as the boundary corner. Overall, the defense looks really good, except for the cornerback spot. You know, still wondering how Jalen Phillips will handle the run. Looks like Van Ginkle might be out for a game or two because he had to me. So that means Ingram's going to step in. In addition to Trey Flowers, I really, really like we got guys to get after, dudes. If we're getting ahead and they're having a pass to catch up to us, it's going to be very difficult for them to stop all these pass rushers, Ed and Baker and everybody else. Still a little thin. I mean, we got Wilkins, Davis, Ogba, Sela, and Jenkins. Now, I like the depth there, but I don't. I'm really concerned about Davis if he goes down. But it's pretty tight, pretty strong unit. Edge guys are tight. Just worry about some of the edge players' ability to stop the run and the linebackers. Because if teams can can open that 
defensive front, which is really good, and get to that second level, I'm not too crazy on the stat, attack stack and shedding of our linebackers, except for maybe Riley and Van Ginkle on the edge. And so that does concern me in these tight games. Well, how is it going to play out? I mean, but again, with Waddle and Hill, maybe we won't have tight games as much. You know, but it, though, that ability to stop the run, ability to handle blockers on the second level is going to be very interesting. But again, it comes back to the corner. We are so thin at corner. I mean, if Byron Jones comes back, when he comes back, if he's healthy, Howard could stay healthy, Needham could stay healthy. We've got enough behind them with Holland and Rowe and Jones to kind of protect it, but Ed sec those corners, especially the boundary corners, are very thin. Crossing and Kahu, that's one of our main guys go down. It's going to be a long ride, and it's going to be very hard for us for those first four games to really run our zero, our full defense the way we want. We need them outside, especially, you know, week one. Patriots, they've got some depth at receiver, and they're going to try to get – Parker over on Needham. Can Needham really stop Parker? I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting. Overall, this this entire team, if they can put points on, play from the lead, and attack with their blitzes with that zero, and we got Jones and, and, and Howard in and Needham, it's going to be very tough to beat in good weather, in semi-bad weather even. But can we play those dirty weather games? Can we be physical enough in those few moments where we're going to need to be to get us through? I don't know. Can we keep the injury bug off us on the offensive line at the cornerback position? I don't know. Maybe it's happened. It's not like, oh, we're definitely going to get injuries on the offensive line. We're definitely going to get injuries in the cornerback. These guys could play healthy all year. But it's going to be a little bit of luck. It's going to be a very, very interesting season. To me... We tried the very finesse style offense. We had a very finesse style defense and offense with Dan Marino playing in these East Coast games, Northeast games, and sometimes we could do it, sometimes we couldn't. It, it worries me that we're not balanced. If we can get home field advantage throughout, now that's a different story. It's going to be, but this is going to be one. I don't even know what, I really can't say what I think is going to happen. I do think this is going to be a tight ride between the Patriots and the Dolphins for second in the division, but we must take second in the division. We must get a playoff spot for all the expenditures we have. It has to happen, especially with the loss of the first and the third from the whole scenario that went on in the offseason. But Skyler, keeping Skyler was good. There's a lot of potential here. I kind of feel like we're a German-made sports car. It's going to look really good when everything is pristine and on fire, but a little bit of dirt here and there, and we might start getting some clunky action going down. But I don't know. We'll see. This week one game, though, is going to tell us a lot, and I don't think it's going to be a blowout like a lot of people are saying. I've kind of pulled back a little bit. The Patriots seem to have been missing some stuff early on, but I don't think it's as much as everyone's saying. I definitely think the Dolphins are going to put Lots of yards on. Can they put points? Can they get this one out? It's going to be very interesting. I think the Patriots are definitely going to be neck and neck with us with the, for the season. And I think it's going to come down to a game or two. If we can get that game or two and get into the postseason, all this will be worth it. And we'll be finally headed in the right direction and not having to talk about next year. But we're going to see. This is Curtis saying thanks for staying to the end. Just a little overview of what we got here. Going to have to dig in deep. We're going to do some film. Going to get some film. Still recovering from the big C. Not an easy ride for this guy this time around. Anyway, thank you. I'm going to try to get to the comments, but I'm just really underpowered, and I'm trying to get to them, so please forgive me. I'm, I will get to them. But uh, thanks for stopping by. This is Curtis saying catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.